recording this just in case that there are parents out there who are not available today to watch this, but also refer back to it at some later time. Um, we'll be putting this on YouTube. Uh, so if you have the need to have this translated on YouTube, it is translated. I'd also like to let people know that they can go to the chat. Um, and on that chat, um, hopefully Miss Sunny Kim is going to be translating. I'm just going to go ahead and double check that Miss Kim is available uh, right now briefly. And there she is. So if you look at the, con the chat, that's where you'll be able to find the translation there. As well, anytime during this uh, presentation, feel free to drop your questions into the chat uh, in Korean or in English, and I'll do my best to answer them uh, by the end of this presentation. So I might not stop in the middle, but please place your questions there and I'll do my best. So uh, the senior project, primarily I, I, I wonder, I think that our senior parents are hopefully here to hear how they can support their students through this graduation requirement. But I'd like to, to start out by explaining kind of what is the purpose of the senior project. So there's a lot of words here and I feel the need to actually read this entire thing to you. But the main purpose of the senior project provides the CDS administration and faculty the opportunity to assess before graduation whether or not 12th grade students possess the characteristics laid out in the Chungna Dalton School graduate profile, which are not directly addressed in our academic courses. So to be specific, we at uh, Dalton School have the student and school-wide outcomes. So these are things that we hope that every single student who progresses through Chungna Dalton School achieves. Um, and so these are our six C's or what we call our school-wide learning outcomes. So no matter what, we want our students to have character, community, critical thinking, curiosity, collaboration, and communication. And the way in which we assess whether or not a student has these is through the senior project. In fact, that is at the present moment, the only way that students are assessed on these criteria. But that's not necessarily the only purpose of this. Uh, the senior project, we have lots of a variety of positive reasons you would want your student to complete a senior project. Um, the biggest other one, I think, to me, is that students get the opportunity to explore an interest of theirs, something that they're passionate about, something that uh, maybe there wasn't uh, a class on here, or even something that there was a class on here, but they want to dive a little bit further. Um, to me, when I look at our, our graduates and I'm involved in developing the alumni association here at our school, the biggest thing I see when our students leave Chung Dalton School is that because of this senior project, they have at least one thing they know that not only are they passionate about it, but they are capable and they can achieve at, at whatever that is. And I think it's a big confidence boost to leave with that. The third thing is that they have the opportunity to provide some sort of assistance or give back to the community in some way. Um, we've had students do you know, projects that help out our specific CDS community. We've had students do projects that have helped out Korean public schools. Um, we've also had senior projects that help out um, charities in Korea and beyond. So ultimately, not only is this something that's going to benefit your students, but also create ethical um, and responsible individuals as our mission states.
So ultimately, and this is something, this is actually a direct quote from Ms. McGuire, but through the project, you show who you are and whether you realize it or not, your potential for success after CDS. Um, this really is a great indicator beyond grades as to a student's readiness level for whatever lies beyond here, whether that's going directly into the military or going directly into the workforce uh, or college. Um, what we have found over the last seven years of doing this is that those students who um, really succeed at this project um, really succeed beyond here and are really successful. So the biggest, uh, I think, implication for students and question they always have is what happens if I do not demonstrate I possess the six C's? So if I, if I go through this senior project um, and at the end on April 8th, I, I don't pass. Um, and then again in May, I don't pass again. Um, you know, you, you cannot get a diploma. Students cannot receive a diploma. Um, they must pass this graduation requirement in order to demonstrate they're ready for that next level. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about how um, students who might not pass on the first go around can, can still pass. Um, and we've, we have had situations where students have had to get their diploma, you know, in July. Um, but ultimately, Ms. McGuire has the course set up so that every student should get a diploma and walk across the stage. More on this later. So I want to just take a moment for our parents and uh, parents, again, this is going to be put on YouTube. But if there's anything you want to take a picture of, it's probably this, uh, this specific slide. So recently, uh, last Friday, we had our senior project pitch event, um, and that was really successful. And all of your children um, who are seniors had the opportunity to meet with, you know, up to about 10 to 12 uh, teachers to share their ideas and get some feedback. On, um, on their project. And I think every senior, and now Ms. Ms. McGuire is actually meeting with them to talk about this, um, every senior left that room feeling very positive and having found a mentor. So coming up this, uh, this Wednesday, so this is actually quite, this is today, in fact, um, students have to finish their proposal. Um, they'll get notified by the end of the week, but today students should be finishing their proposal. And I think this is an area where, where parents can really support their, uh, their students is just, you know, asking questions, being curious. Um, you're not expected to, to help. And, and all, honestly, we would appreciate it if you did not help parent, parents, you know, let the students demonstrate this on their own, but definitely show interest and get students excited about what, what it is they're doing. Um, and the proposal is a big first step. So definitely ask questions about what they're doing. The next thing that happens throughout the year, and again, we've set checkpoints to make sure that all students are successful, is essentially uh, every month until the deadline uh, or the end of this process on April 8th, you know, there are checkpoints with Ms. McGuire but there are also checkpoints with their mentors. So every student has a mentor through this process, a faculty uh, currently here um, on campus to support them. And um, it's expected that they reach certain benchmarks by each of these checkpoints. And finally on April 8th, and I'll talk a little bit more about this, um, uh, is on April 8th for the digital presentation. And actually joining me right now is, is Ms. Talene Brady. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on my mask so Ms. Brady can join me. Hi parents, good to see you. Can we go from here? Yeah. So as Mr. Musselman said, uh, the senior project proposal poster is due this Wednesday and those will be reviewed by the senior project committee and then displayed in our school so that 
other students can see what projects our students are working on. I've heard of a lot of them already and they're really exciting this year. So I'm excited to see their posters up. Uh, have you, you've talked about their mentors. I've talked well. a little bit about mentors, but again, every everybody has a mentor who is going to be their point person. You know, the senior project committee is the reviewing uh, group, but everybody has a mentor. So um, again, this is an opportunity, I think, for parents to, to ask who the mentor is. And if there are, you know, issues or frustrations, you know, the mentor is really the point person you should talk to first before going to Ms. McGuire, who's ultimately in charge of the whole process. Um, but those are two people I think you'll wanna know um, from your student. And it is the student's job to reach out to their mentor. So I know with the students that I mentor, I require them to meet with me once a week, but I don't like hunt them down. It's their job to set up those meetings because as their seniors, we want them to self-guide on this project. So they should be reaching out to their mentors, not the other way around. And this is, that's again, going back to the six C's, which I talked about earlier. This is how they demonstrate character. Mm -hmm. They reach out to us. We do not reach out to them. So you may have heard that we had our senior project pitch event last Friday in the Phoenix Cafe and in the library where students met with teachers to share their projects and get new ideas. That was a really exciting time because they uh, shared their projects and hopefully got some feedback on what would be good for them and what they could learn. Any questions? Okay. And then now that that has been completed, oops, sorry, uh, they're turning in their posters today, and then they will also have checkpoints throughout this project. So there are five checkpoints that their mentors will have to report back how the student is doing and if they need additional guidance. Again, the students need to schedule these meetings and reach out to their mentors. The mentors are told to not actually reach out first because it is the student's responsibility to do this. And I think one more thing to add just about these checkpoints that um, this is another way in which we check whether or not a student is ready to receive a diploma and pass a senior project. If there are issues at you know, two or three of these checkpoints and students clearly demonstrate that they're not working towards the goal, um, then they have not been timely. And this is a part of the rubric we'll talk about uh, later, but they really need to make sure they're continuing to take steps forward throughout the process, not just at the very end. So throughout the project as well, they have senior project seminar, which happens on Wednesdays today from 135 to 225. And that's when students can get direct help from Ms. McGuire. She might bring them in individually. She might bring them in in groups. So for example, today, I know she's meeting with students who have a partner project, uh, but they do have a designated time every single week where they can actually get help on this project from Ms. McGuire. Their projects are due on Friday, Friday, April 8th, and they will actually create a virtual presentation uh, that will then be submitted. And uh, those will be reviewed by the senior project committee. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> It's six teachers, Ms. McGuire evaluates or trains all of us and evaluate, to evaluate them. Um, it, it's a pretty comprehensive process. So every teacher that is grading the projects has been trained and knows exactly what they're looking for and what to do. We have a rubric that I think is coming up next. Yep. This is the rubric that's used to evaluate the senior project. So it's based on the six C's. There is only three categories to the senior project, either inadequate, which means you do not pass, that's on the far right-hand column, adequate, which means you pass, and exemplary. Exemplary, it's highly unlikely that a student would get exam exemplary in every category, and that's okay. Exemplary is just those projects that kind of go above and beyond, and those students are considered for our 6C awards for the senior projects. But if a student gets all adequate in their project, that's fine, they still pass. So their project is kind of a pass-fail situation, uh, but if they have an inadequate, then they will receive feedback on April or, or shortly after April 8th and be given an opportunity to fix and adjust their project. So for example, last year we had a lot of students who did their entire project, they did a great project, turned in their presentation, but they forgot to include their citations. So that student received inadequate and failed in quotations, uh, but then once they fixed that, 
they passed and it was fine. So just because a student might not pass the first time doesn't mean that they are not given another opportunity to correct their mistakes and go forward with that. And again, the citations uh, are part of this communication uh, aspect. So again, the six C's, um, you have that first one, which is more about the process. And this is about the presentation overall. Um, how do you communicate to the uh, reviewers and to your audience what you did? Um, and can you get that across in a way that demonstrates that you can communicate uh, well mm -hmm. moving forward? So if you don't pass on April 8th, students will have an opportunity to correct the mistakes they've made, as I said, but by May 27th at 4 p.m., that will be our final deadline. So most students will pass much, much earlier than that. As you can see, it's almost a full two months after the first initial date. But if they do not pass on May 27th at 4 p.m., then they will not be able to walk across the stage at graduation. They can still attend the ceremony in a cap and gown, but they will not receive their diploma until they actually meet the graduation requirement of passing the senior project. We do usually have one student every year who does not walk across the stage. My goal this year is to have zero students. That would be beautiful, wouldn't it, Mr. Musselman? Right. And I think, you know, this is not a situation in which we want to get into ever, obviously, for a lot of reasons, but we want to make sure that we're really transparent with parents. That, that this is the case. Um, ultimately, we have set up the situation from the very beginning of the year. In fact, your, your students who are seniors started last year. Ms. McGuire met with them last year uh, to discuss this project. And so students to this point theoretically have been brainstorming and working already for a few months. Um, they have every Wednesday from here to, to April will be dedicated to doing work on their senior project. Um, really only reason we would get into a situation like, you know, situation like this is where a student is clearly not doing anything on their senior project. So I guess this is where I would emphasize to parents, um, just show genuine interest and care in a student's project. I think, if you're aware of just kind of where they are at in their process or what they're doing or whether or not they're excited about this, you know, students should really be picking something they're excited about. And especially right now, if they're picking something, they're, they're like, oh, I have to do this. They're picking the wrong thing. Everything that, you know, students should do from this point till April uh, should be something they really genuinely love period. This should be really enjoyable and not just seen as something to get through. We ultimately want and, and have had students who have finished this project and then continued to do this throughout college and beyond, and maybe even are still doing their project. This, you know, might be something that just doesn't end. Um, so something to keep in mind, I think from parents, this is the kind of support that we can have from you. Before we get to questions. Oh, sorry, yeah. One more thought and we can keep it I on accidentally <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for you, you should know too, from our end, there is absolutely no reason that you should be paying money to do this. Um, you know, this is something that students should be creatively, cre you know, creating on their own. There's no need for money uh, at all. So keep that in mind. Yeah, we are not asking you to spend hundreds of dollars on your student senior project. So any questions you have, Miss Sunny Kim uh, will translate for us. Hopefully we can, we're scrolling down right now. And uh, I understand that there are parents who sadly aren't able to attend. We have a hundred participants here, which is great to see. Yeah, it means we have um, more than we have seniors. But we will definitely be posting this on YouTube. But what questions do, do parents have? How did you draw this red line? I did not. Oh. <laughs> Senior project 관련해서 질문 있으시면 질문 남겨주시면 감사하겠습니다.
So um, when students choose the topic, is there like certain um, area that they should choose from or on what standard should students choose their topics? So uh, we always recommend that students choose a project about something they're already interested in. So for example, if they want to study physics in university, uh, doing a project that's related to physics somehow now is great. Or if there's someone who's passionate about animal welfare, doing a project about um, like volunteering with animals is good as well. But we never let a student choose a project that we know won't become a successful senior project or that isn't possible. That's why we have the pitch event and why they have to do proposal posters and have all these checkpoints so that they're never doing a project that's either too easy or too hard or too small or too big. We want kind of that just right senior project so that it's doable for our students. But as long as they're choosing something interest that they are interested in and that um, will have an impact some way, somehow, then it's always a successful senior project. And going back to what Ms. Brady said is, you know, pick something that, you know, you can use that, that has mm -hmm. utility, um, not just utility, but genuine enjoyment. We've had students literally use this project in their uh, applications for their colleges and to show that they literally built something um, it's pretty astounding. And I think it makes a big impact in the college, uh, you know, process. And it can be something as like, we've had someone do something as serious as making a tool that measures air quality. And then something as fun as just having a pep rally at school. And both of those projects are completely valid and okay because they were passionate about those topics and wanted to contribute and share with the community. So there isn't really like one specific type just as long as the student enjoys it. Great question. Yeah, very good question. Can the topic be changed after the pitch? Yes. Uh, we often have students who maybe they pick a project and they kind of get into it and they're like, you know what, this is not going to work. It's just not possible. Um, like maybe they're trying to build a garden on the rooftop and Dr. Park says, no, we can't put a bunch of garden up there. Um, so that's okay, that's okay. And maybe they have to change and develop it, but they'll work with their mentor and with Ms. McGuire to adjust that. So a change in the senior project is not like a death uh, toll to a senior project either. Yeah, I think the even some of the best projects in the last seven years that I've seen come through have had major changes at the beginning. Um, what, you, what your, your student or the student should do is really just express in that video why they changed and mm -hmm. show genuine reflection, which is a part of the process. Um, you know, this is something that is a process and it's not, you know, for a product at the end. It's mm -hmm. the process of creating and building and reflecting upon that. I think that's a really good thing to emphasize that the process is what students are evaluated on, not the product. So they might have the most beautiful painting you've ever seen in your life, but if they did that the night before the project was due, that would fail because they don't show the process. The process is what we're interested in. You're welcome. Yes, you're welcome. Maybe we did so well that they don't have a lot of questions. I'm sure we did a great, <laughs> fantastic. What other questions we can stay? We have allotted quite a long time for here. So what questions do you have? We're just joking, Sonny, we're not leaving. Do we prepare it for one year? Is that her question? Oh. oh, correct. Yes. Yeah. So ultimately seniors, and again, this is only for seniors. Once senior year begins um, within the first week or two, um, this process really kicks off and starts. Uh, ultimately, you could say it really starts junior year at the end of the year, but every year uh, seniors starting their senior year go through a process for that year to complete this project. Mm -hmm. um, but Freshmen, sophomores, juniors. What's really great is that 
you know, they'll get to see some of the products created here and experience some of the events and get to see what's possible. And so um, they don't have to do anything yet, but what we're seeing is students are really gaining a lot of knowledge from these seniors as they go through this. And the projects keep getting better and better every year um, because students are thinking about it. So the good question, what's the standard of pass or fail? Uh, if we have that adequate or inadequate is the line between pass or fail. And the rubric that maybe Jason can, or Mr. Musselman, I'm sorry, can pull it up here again, that um, this rubric that we've shared, we have already shared with students and it will be shared with them time and time and time again. Um, this is how we measure if they've passed or failed. So it's based on the six C's. Their uh, character is about honoring their commitments, managing their time. They have a journal that they use to keep track of that information. And it's just a Google sheet or a Google form. It's very easy to use. Curiosity, it's about if they answer their essential question. Uh, they've already been developing their essential questions and those will be on their project posters that are due today. The critical thinking is they go through the launch cycle here. Um, you know, did they look around for something, ask questions, understand their project by conducting research. If they're in English 12, research will actually be part of their class. So that will be tied in to their lessons already. Uh, and then they're creating, highlighting and fixing. The collaboration with their mentor, the mentor that they have will just evaluate. Yes, they worked with me or no, they did not work with me, kept me informed and attended meetings. Uh, and then community, it just has to impact a community, whether that's CDS, Chungna, uh, the world, Korea, it doesn't matter. So those are how they're evaluated. And then communication is just how they present the project digitally. It's just a video that they will make of themselves going through their PPT. Yeah, and I think the aim, uh, we, we did get a comment here that, you know, this is a great opportunity. I think for a long time, people saw this as just another thing that students had to do. But the way in which we as a school see this is an opportunity. Um, we want our students to not just be successful today, we want them to be successful for the rest of their lives. And so we wanna develop lifelong learners and provide them opportunities to learn about themselves, to build their own confidence. Um, and we see this project as really a great opportunity for them to really discover themselves. Can students discuss uh, with any teacher for the pitch preparation? Absolutely. In fact, even if a student isn't sure right now what they'd like to do, um, now that the pitch event has come and gone, I'd encourage them if they're still unsure to, to talk to as many teachers as, as possible. Every teacher in our school knows about this process. Um, you know, even the new teachers know that this is happening. They took part in the pitch event so they can answer and field questions. I'd say the, the teachers who've been here maybe the longest might be the most helpful since they've seen uh, at this point, over 300 projects um, have happened. So we know a little bit about what makes a successful project. What are some concerns we have about projects and maybe some that maybe to steer clear of. But you can talk to anybody. Yeah. yeah. I just told a student to go talk to Mr. Talbot today, actually, about their project. There we go. Sharing is caring. Yeah. So we do have some students who start preparing in grade 11. Ms. McGuire gives an information session at the end of grade 11. Um, and so, for example, I think we have a student this year who part of her project is writing and illustrating a book and then publishing it. I'm Anyway, I don't know all the details of her project, but she actually already began over the summer. She helped write this book and illustrated it. So, yes, it's OK if they start early. That's completely fine. I would say, though, um... Again, because we're looking at the process, um, you can't necessarily start in your freshman year, your mm -hmm. sophomore year. Um, if you're involved in a club, your freshman year, sophomore year, and then your senior project is to revamp that club or to make changes that make it more efficient, then yeah, I mean, that can all be a part of your whole process. Um, but, you know, I would, I would say, yes, you can start anytime, but make sure that you are tracking your process, reflecting upon it. Um, and a lot of this, a lot of this real, um, 
tech point stuff is going to happen in the senior year. So you still must be working on it through throughout your senior year. I think that, yeah, for yeah. sure. That's definitely true. But if they want to, if they have an idea and they want to use them at the summer, that's fine. Um, my children wants to do a project with uh, within the school and she wants to use a 3D printing uh, or construction materials. Would it be possible to get some help from outside? Um, this is something we've actually we would love if people brought experts or people from outside or resources from outside. Um, again, you don't have to pay for any of this. We also have a 3D printer here. Um, but if there are experts that are outside of here, um, we have had in the past having a mentor in the school and a mentor outside the school. That's highly recommended. If you can have somebody who understands aerodynamics and you're doing some sort of physics experiment, have a physicist outside. Um, the more the merrier. Yeah, I agree. I think if, if because of course not every teacher at CDS knows everything. So uh, it's like someone gave the example of welding. I would say none of our teachers have welding equipment or have knowledge about that. So if a student has a resource and would like to explore that, I think that's a fantastic idea. They just need to keep their in-school mentor in the loop and knowledgeable about that so they can include that information in their project presentation. Great question. Students also are allowed to like work with outside, outside um, organizations. We had a student two years ago who volunteered with an outside organization and that was a fantastic way uh, to bring their project to the wider community. It was really good. If you have any more questions, we'd be happy to hear them. All right, well, at this time, I think we'll, we'll close our meeting. Um, I will say that myself, Ms. Brady, uh, Ms. McGuire, your, your student's mentor, uh, or anybody really in the office is, is really waiting to help you um, if you have any questions. Um, but we really appreciate um, all of you coming. I don't think we've ever had as many parents come to a parent information session. Uh, I didn't realize there was a cap on how many I could have in this Zoom, but we hit 100 and we had more who wanted to come. Uh, if, if one of your friends wanted to come but couldn't be here, just let them know. We'll be posting this on YouTube by the end of the day so that they can, can engage with this. Um, but if you're watching at home on YouTube, feel free to send your questions our way. We're, we're really ready for them. And that's it. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a lovely afternoon. Take care.